Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about um, our life on the road as far as homeschooling and what that looks like because let's face it, homeschooling in a regular house is hard. Uh, homeschooling on the road has its own set of challenges and so I just want to talk to you all about how we deal with that and uh, what road schooling looks like for our family. You can't do the fun you thing. You can't do the fun thing until, until you, you do, do the, the real, real life thing. thing. We're gonna so st we're gonna put post that on t-shirts. Um now be roll. What is uh, something that I knew would be a problem and obviously it is we live in an RV space space is a huge thing um, when you're homeschooling in a house space can be an issue so you move that homeschool into an RV obviously there's gonna be challenges with homeschooling in an RV we have a table as all RVs pretty much have you have a dining room table and that's where our school happens we do it around the dining room table interruption and <laughs> Space, see, he's in my space right now. Um, but it works for us. We have three kids. Now, if we had more children, that would probably become even more of an issue. And what would we do? I don't know. We might move school outside. People might do school in their bed. Uh, you know, all different families do different stuff. For us, our dining room table, just like it was in our house, is where we do school, and it works fine for us. Um, and the great thing about road schooling um, or homeschooling on the road is that the road, the, the world, is our classroom. So that sounds so corny, but it's really true. That's why we're doing this, to teach our kids about our world. Um, so yeah, our reading, our math, all those things, that happens around the dining room table. Um, everything else, we really, we try to get out and do things outside, go places, learn things. So number two, so it's really hard to sit down with a second grader and a kindergartner and try to work with them on their reading or their math when you've got three-year-old little sister, you know, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do this, and she doesn't really have a bedroom or somewhere that she can go. Um and have a whole bunch of stuff to occupy her. We're limited in that. So, so a lot of times I'll get a coloring book and try to get her coloring or we will turn on a video, which is what she's doing right now. She's watching Strawberry Shortcake, um, a DVD back there. Um, most of the time I'll try to put on something educational. Uh, we've had a really crazy morning this morning. So she's watching Strawberry Shortcake and that's okay. No, M-I-L-K. M-I-L-K. Good job. I think this has moved. Oh, so touching it. I knocked your phone in the floor. Why would you do that? It was like hanging off right here and I just put my hand down in it. How do you find time to concentrate? Alright, I'm not I'm not stopping now. If anybody interrupts me, I'm just gonna keep talking. Is that it? Number three. Finding balance. Uh, balance between we are traveling and we're in a really cool place and we wanna go do all the fun things to this is real life and we have to get our schoolwork done. We have to do our chores. We have to do all the normal family things that make a family work and make life happen. Uh, so, me. yes, buddy? I'm gonna do this page tomorrow. Okay, then yes, you can stop and finish the rest tomorrow. That's fine. Go ahead and shut your book. So, um, where did I leave off? What did I, before that? So how do we deal with that? How do we find balance between wanting to go do all the fun things and actually doing real life? That is probably one of the hardest things for me. Uh, for example, we went to Pruitt Reservoir. I'll link that uh, below somewhere. But um, we went there this past summer and we pulled up, we parked the RV maybe 10, 15 yards from the water. The weather was fantastic and every morning we woke up and the sun was shining on the water and like glistening in the trees. It was so pretty. And we wanted to go get in the water. The kids were like, can we go get on our kayak? Can we go paddleboard? Can we go do this and that? And um, they loved the water and it was so hard for me to say, no, you've got to do your schoolwork first. You've got to do your chores first. So, um, 
even though you're in a really cool place, we, this is not vacation. We are, this is our real life. So we're not on a permanent vacation by any means. Derek still has to work. I still have to work. I have to teach the kids. They have to do school, do their chores. Um, this is still real life. So how do we do it? We really have to get better about it. I'm not going to lie. We are not perfect by any means. We really struggle with this. We really, really struggle with it because if we're in a cool place, we want to go have fun. It is a really nice day outside. <laughs> I would really like to go do something, go for a run or See, something like that. See, you're killing me. <laughs> it is such a nice day outside. That was not planned, by the way. <laughs> you're mean. The biggest way that we uh, tackle that challenge is that we do not have a summer. Um, I made a decision probably two years ago to not give my children a summer. And some people say that sounds mean. Well, a lot of homeschool families actually do it this way, but we take a break at Christmas and then we will take a break in the summer, but it's going to be like a week here and a week there with school in between. Uh, my children need consistency and they need to continue learning throughout the year because we do we take a lot of breaks we take a lot of days off and if we were only to do school from september to may or june we would go we would fall really behind and um we we don't want to get super behind and um so that's what we do we do school year round getting doing school year round is probably the biggest uh way that we tackle that um and then and just having to stay on ourselves and be responsible and teach them that you can't do the fun thing until you do the real life thing. You just made that up. You can't do the real thing until you do, you can't do the fun you thing. You can't do the fun thing until, until you, you do, do the, the real, real life thing. thing. <laughs> we're gonna so, we're gonna put, post that on t-shirts. And if you've liked this video, please like it and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. There you go. And number four, what do I have on my list for number four? I'm not gonna say that. Don't put that in there who person who edits videos. The next thing that we really struggle with, um, I guess I really struggle with, with homeschooling period, whether it's on the road or not, is am I doing enough? Um, I really, really struggle with my, am I doing enough for my kids? Go, hurry. We're in this stage where we have to announce to the entire family that I have to pee every single time. Not really sure why. <laughs> You know, we have curriculum for math. We have a curriculum for reading. I know that I'm doing the curriculum. I'm going through it. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, but I still, I still just doubt myself. Like what else should I be doing? Do we spend enough time? And, and it, I know in the back of my mind, I know it's silly. That's the whole point of homeschooling is, or one of the points of homeschooling is so that you don't have to spend seven or eight hours sitting in a desk at a, you know, with a book in your face every day. Um, and so that we can get it done quick. And, but sometimes, you know, you just doubt yourself as a mom in all areas, not just school. So um, if you're a homeschooling mom or, or dad uh, family and you, you know, I know that people struggle with this too. It's not just me. Uh, so maybe you found ways to get through that. Um, you know, reach out, share with us what you do or what you've done to, to tackle that, that concern. Uh, for me, I think I just have to continue talking with people that are doing what we're doing or that homeschool, you know, even in their homes and, uh, and take their advice and, you know, follow their lead and they've had success with their kids and, you know, listen to them and do what they do. It's just really hard. It's hard. And, um, Come on. and then also knowing that God has equipped me to give my kids what they need. Like he's not going to give me more than I can handle. And, um, if I follow his lead, I can do anything and give them what they need. And so I have to remain, you know, confident in that too, but it's, it's still hard. So if you have any suggestions, send them my way. And, uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say. The last thing that I wanted to talk about um, in regards to homeschooling on the road is lack of community. We don't have a group of people that we're around. I, like I said before, we, I do have friends that have homeschooled. Um, I have quite a few and I have some that their children are grown and have, you know, gone on to be successful adults. They're married and have kids of their own. And it's really great to have their mentorship. And I cherish that. But um, at the same time, it's hard not to have a community of people 
with you all the time that you can physically be in front of their face and talk with them and and tell them what you're struggling with and i have a kid struggling with this what do i do what would you do and you know things like that so community period being on the road is difficult we have joined um, an organization called full-time families and if you've never heard of full-time families they are a organization of other families just like us who are traveling full-time live in their rv some of them live on boats um, there's people that are doing all different kinds of things, but for the main part, it's people like us traveling the country in their RV. And, uh, we're really excited to meet up with some other families. We haven't yet because we've been mostly at Air Force Base campgrounds and it's been nothing but retirees. So we're really excited in the spring to start meeting some other families that have kids. And one of the best things about it is that because they're like us and on the road, they all homeschool. So we're all in the same boat together. We uh, can, you know, bounce ideas off of each other and stuff like that. So I'm looking really forward to that. Uh, the other thing is that we are going to join, it's called Thousand Trails, and that is what a lot of the other full-time families use for their campgrounds. And we're gonna join that so that we can actually physically be around other families more um, and hopefully gain a community that way. But we, we've really missed out on having other people write physically with us. And that, so that is a challenge because we don't have a home church. We don't have a, a group, a homeschool co-op or something that we can be a part of. So that, that's created its own set of, um, you know, concerns and am I doing the right things and, and all of that. It goes back to doubting myself, but just not having a community and not having other kids for our, our kids to be around. Um, and people say, oh, homeschool kids aren't socialized. You know, our, our kids are, are great. We go, we're around plenty of other kids, just not in a homeschool setting. So that's something that, that I think would be great once we start to meet other full-time families. Okay. Okay, so there you have it. That's our biggest five challenges that we deal with homeschooling on the road. Uh, space, lack of motivation or trying to get, you know, find balance, how to balance out the fun stuff with the real stuff. Having a little sister that isn't in school yet and causing a distraction. Um, am I doing enough as a mom? Am I doing enough for them in the long term? Uh, what could I be doing better? And then the last one is community. We, we don't have a community that we're a part of yet, and we're really searching for that. And subscribe. Uh, so subscribe to our channel, see where we're at, and hit us up. And if you're thinking about this lifestyle, then also subscribe to our channel and see what we're up to. And if you want more information, then reach out. Go like this. No. With your eyebrows. Okay, never mind. What? It's over. It's over? Yeah.